wanted to talk today about a new fiber optic gyroscope design I've been working on, which I've got shown right here. And uh, one of the uh, ideas with making this new design was that I wanted to get the dimensions of it down to around uh, one foot in diameter. With uh, some of the earlier uh, versions that I'd made, they were usually around 16 inches in diameter, which was pretty large for mounting onto a turntable. So this is now a more convenient size. It's almost the size of a vinyl record kind of thing, so it fits quite well onto a turntable. I also wanted to uh, use as much as possible 3D printing to make uh, the device much neater in terms of the layout of the fiber and uh, also to have like a series of custom design parts that I can just kind of like put together like Lego to make the whole thing. So uh, the parts here in the blue are fiber holders that I 3D printed. I've got eight of them around uh, like a clockwise kind of pattern here and I've mounted them, them on a pre-drilled uh, stainless steel platform. Uh, so the, the fiber uh, for the main loop is around the outside which is a hundred meters of single mode fiber optic cable, SMF28 type cable. I've got one 2x2 two two coupler and you can see where it's connected in at these two points here and I've made some little custom clips 3D printed again to hold them into place. Uh, the 2x2 two two, two coupler, the, the fuse coupling is over here and uh, as before we've used a uh, polarization controller paddle wheel right here which allows us to adjust the uh, phase uh, polarization angle between the two uh, beams so we can bring them close to parity for maximum sensitivity. Uh, another thing that I've done here is um, I've integrated the infrared laser and the uh, photodiode amplifier into one box. So the IR goes out from this port here and it returns back to the photodiode at this port. And the amplifier is uh, built in so we can adjust the zero on the amplifier here. There's a single switch and one power supply which is a 9 volt battery that's right there. And as before, everything's displayed on our digital multimeter, which is mounted in the center. So I'm just going to show this in operation in a minute, but uh, I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. We got it down into a very neat little design uh, with about 12 inches diameter for putting onto a turntable. So we've got our uh, fiber optic gyroscope now on a turntable, and uh, we've got it zeroed. Uh, so we're just going to show that rotating, and uh, we'll see what that looks like. You can see that the values on the meter go right up to about 3.5 volts as we spin it up. We slow it down. Now you can see it. it it's very sensitive in the low range. So very small changes in rotation here are very visible. And that goes back pretty close to zero. And you get like a positive change both clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, and this is because uh, we're um, at uh, phase opposition with the two waves in the stationary state. So in both directions of rotation, you're going to get them going towards closer to phase uh, parity. And that means the voltage is going to increase. So what we've got shown here is uh, the fiber optic gyroscope back on the turntable, but this time uh, we've switched out the multimeter for a Bluetooth data logger, which you can see is the white box in the center. Uh, this is a custom designed uh, data logger that we made in-house here. And uh, the Bluetooth transmitter is on the left-hand side. That's the little black box sticking out. So it's ready to go. We're going to uh, rotate this up and send some data directly to uh, our computer, capture it in Excel. Uh, using the uh, PuTTY program and uh, we'll show the calibration curve for this device. So what we're looking at here is the data logger output that we've imported directly into Excel and it shows uh, what happens when you start from zero and uh, speed the rotor up to 105 PM, RPM and then allow it to go back down to zero. So this is our baseline voltage at zero RPM, which we've set to around zero on the multimeter. And then when it spins up to 105 RPM, uh, we go from the out of phase condition to the in phase condition. So we reach a maximum voltage here at 60 RPM. Then we start heading back towards out of phase 
which at 105 RPM is the maximum on the turntable. So it just kind of sits there until we uh, turn the turntable off and then it slowly spins down through 60 to 30 to 19 to 13 back down to 0 RPM. And the red lines are actually some markers that we've put in to mark the RPM. Uh, so every time the rotor passes a point, uh, each rotation it makes a blip, which we can then see in our data to tell us how fast it was going. And that's effectively what the, uh, what the output looks like. And just note that the output voltage response to RPM is not linear. And the reason why is because uh, we're going from the out-of-phase condition to the in-phase condition. And in the in-phase condition, the response is much less sensitive. So when it's out-of-phase, the two waves, uh, as they reach the photodetector, the response is very fast as a large voltage increase as they start to go into phase with each other but as they get close to being exactly in phase the voltage change is far less so that's why it's important to have your interferometer set up to start at the out of phase condition because this is the most sensitive condition to rotation for if you're looking for a voltage change